Hey folks, great to see you. Jude here. And Hannah. Hey. <laughs> Good to be with you. We're in the next of our uh, Baptising to Christ uh, series and, um, and looking uh, now at the value, our value grow, which is about kind of growing in faith, our kind of growth in, in character and, and sort of personal discipleship into that relationship, deeper into that relationship with God. Um, Hannah, there's a couple of texts for us and kind of you just going to intro things a bit. Yep, you should have them to hand. Um, so Luke 6, verses 1 to 16, and also Galatians 3, verse 23 to 27, kind of frames it. And I think before we were going to look at some spiritual disciplines that help us grow as Christians, I just wanted to say that these things don't, you know, don't make us Christians. They don't give us points. We don't score points with God. You know, it's wonderful that we are under grace. We are justified by faith. And that's what Amen. the Galatians passage says. You know, there's nothing we can do to make God love us anymore. And there's nothing we can do to make God love us any less. So it's amazing, isn't it? It's part of just what is so wonderful about being a Christian. It's not a kind of tick box thing. It's not about earning God's favour. But as you say, Hannah, there are, there are spiritual disciplines. There are things that we do in our lives where we can grow in that relationship, in the depth of that relationship with God. In fact, that's what God wants for us, isn't it? To kind of go on this journey of, of kind of growing in, in, in love and faith uh, to God. So, so how do, what, what are some of the things in the passage that you kind of drew our attention to? Okay, well, the first thing um, I looked at um, was Sabbath rest. Um, for chapter 6 of Luke starts with Jesus doing two things on, on Sabbath. He heals a person and he and his disciples walk through a field and pick grain and you know the Pharisees and the teachers of the law are trying to catch him out they're trying to accuse him of breaking the law but mm. Jesus says in verse 5 that the son of man is lord of the sabbath and although we're not under law anymore you know he came to fulfill the law and some of these things that the Jews still observe today are really helpful for us and one of them is sabbath rest and you know, over the years, we've tried to figure out what Sabbath rest looks like for us and failed miserably sometimes. But for us, Sabbath rest um, means 24 hours of not doing our day job. Worky stuff. Um, yeah. Worky stuff, if we can. And, if, and for us, that's a Saturday. Um, it's not a Sunday. And for different people, it will be different days, especially if you work shifts or you have, you know, um, different different life patterns but to have 24 hours off and um, where you're not doing work where you're not answering the phone where you're not replying to emails that can wait you know not having been on social media much but spending time in God's creation and doing stuff that you love doing um, you know Jesus in these two stories he was restoring people what is it that you could do on a Sabbath that restores you so that you're ready for the rest of the week ahead. Come on, Hannah, I love that. I mean, we work, we work pretty hard, don't we, as kind of trying to serve uh, St. James and kind of what God's doing uh, more widely in the ministries we're involved in. Uh, but I know for myself, you know, just having that day, you know, just being pretty, um, well, being strict, you know, about that day and not, and not doing stuff has been part of what's uh, sustained us through life and ministry and what keeps things kind of energizing and fresh and uh, and there is there are temptations you know the flesh sometimes you think oh gosh if I just spent a bit of time doing that thing I'd get ahead or you know there's temptations to kind of work or to compromise the sabbath um, but actually kind of honoring God through those choices well we we found that to be really sort of life-giving uh, and enriching so um, yeah sabbath now in extension to that is, is, is particularly Sunday isn't it because for most people Sunday is the kind of Sabbath day when we gather and worship together and kind of have a, a chilled day. How, how, does, how does that relate kind of to Sabbath more generally? Yeah, well, in verse 6 of our passage, um, Jesus went into the synagogue and he was teaching. And that's where the Jews, you know, would meet together as a community and, and worship God. So coming to church on Sundays, um, you know, is really important. Again, it doesn't um, define us who don't get points for coming to church but it's something that's really helpful and um, you know for me I sometimes think to myself you know what what impact does it have if I don't come to church um, and for me not coming to church you know I don't maybe my week isn't set up quite as well 
um, if I don't come to church and I don't worship, you know, being led in worship is just wonderful. Praying corporately and listening to a sermon and being together is really important. But, you know, it is, it is hard sometimes, isn't it? Mm. But, and, and, and it's interesting that that, that, pattern, that pattern of the Sabbath has always been there for God's people, you know, down through kind of the, the, the ages, as it were, but, you know, before Jesus, that actually they were still taking, you know, the best thing to do on a day of rest in the week is to come into God's presence and, and worship and, and come alongside other, um, uh, other followers of Jesus uh, as well and to receive that encouragement and enrichment. And again, we've noticed, haven't we? I mean, I mean the stats tell us that across the country, you know, Sunday attendance is still 20% down from the COVID, uh, prior to the COVID levels. We, we haven't um, been affected in quite the same way. But, but even for across our church family, I think many of us have kind of, um, kind of got used to maybe doing other things on a Sunday sometimes and, and maybe Sunday gathering, perhaps taking a slightly less uh, of a priority in our week. So I think it's just, it's worth, isn't it, just running that equation, actually. If, it is a, if it's for us, you know, if that gathering and that, that place, that time of worship is for, is God's gift to us, you know, within the context of Sabbath, then, um, yeah, then it's not surprising if we feel a bit kind of... Um, you know, less topped up or less ready for the week ahead if we if we miss it. So, yeah. Great. Yeah, so, and then moving on to um, just a third area was, was scripture. They all start with S, which was very helpful. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, so when the, the Pharisees were, you know, trying to accuse Jesus, he squo- quoted scripture um, to them. And, you know, it's just, um, you know, something for us to think about. How well do we know our Bibles? But it's, it's not just for knowledge and it's not just for theology and it's not just to, you know, win arguments. But actually, you know, the Bible feeds us. Mm, it on. really feeds us and it nourishes us and it speaks to us. And God can speak to us every day if we choose to read it every day. I struggle with reading generally. Um, I find it difficult. My mind wanders and... But there are apps, right, and all sorts of other technology yeah. we can use to kind of make it more accessible. So I have help. So I, I use two apps um, on my phone, which I can tell you about, um, Lectio and Bible in a Year, and also Daily Bread Notes, just an aid to help me read the Bible. Yeah. And actually, and meeting up with friends. I mean, I sometimes early, early morning on a coffee shop, I'll see some of the folks from St. James gathering to kind of read the Bible together. And actually, reading with others can be just a really helpful uh, experience too. Come on, I, I love that thing about the Bible being being like bread. You know, we need to eat it. I mean, if that could be our mindset that, that you know this is sustenance, God's sustenance to us. I think that would probably that might help us get past some of the kind of well, you know, is it about learning a new thing or kind of you know just about information? But actually, this is this is encounter. Uh, this is God feeding us. Really helpful. Go on, and finally, what, what have we got? Yeah, finally, um, it's just about prayer, and that's on our own. Solitary prayer, um, oh, I, yes. I took it. And Another in verse rest. 12, um, Jesus went out um, to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. And Jesus does this on a few occasions, especially when there's a significant event that happens afterwards. And here, um, in the morning, he calls his 12 disciples. And You know, so important for for Jesus to spend that time with his father and so important for us to have undisturbed, um, uninterrupted time with God um, to listen and to talk. And so that is the final spiritual discipline from this passage that um, we wanted to look at today. Mm -hmm. I I I find it helpful, Hannah, how you sort of couch that, frame that within uh, the context of decision making. And and lots of folks will, will ask us, won't they, you know, how do you make sort of godly decisions and, and discern God's will for a particular situation? And, and our answer tends to be along the lines of, well, just, you know, pray, keep praying, um, talk to other people, you know, push doors. But as, as we pray and as we make time to talk to God about it, we generally get a sense of which way to go. And there's a kind of peace that comes with that as we continue and persist uh, in prayer. So, hey, really helpful. Um, any final kind of questions for us as we as we land? Well, I think we're nearly there, but I think just to remember that all these things can be costly and it can be a sacrifice because there's always other things that we can be doing apart from doing these spiritual disciplines. And um, I've just learned over the years that doing these spiritual disciplines do does help me grow as a Christian, yeah. and that's what we want. 
Come on. It's about growing, growing in faith, growing in our relationship uh, with the God who loves us. And I, and I love that little footnote there, Hannah, because the, the theme of the series, of course, is dying to die, death to life, dying to live. And so actually it is challenging ourselves, challenging one another. What are the things that kind of the, the, the default, the habits, the, 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 the sort of self stuff that we just need to lay down sometimes to make space for what God has for us, which is better. Can I pray for us? Yeah. Is that all right? So let's pray. Yeah. Yeah, Father God, thank you that uh, you love us and you want us to grow. Uh, and Lord, we, we want to grow. We want to grow in faith and, and in relationship with you. And so for the things we've talked about now, Lord, just stir our minds, our imaginations, our conversations. Help us as we, we talk to one another and think on these things. Uh, and to really put into practice some of the things that will help us grow as followers of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.